Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Don't get stuck putting all those miles and depreciation on your personal vehicle. Instead, check out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used the program for 10 weeks. It was super simple, and Fair even arranged for Uber to pick me up at my home and drive me to my new car, which was a nice Hyundai Elantra for $195 per week plus taxes. That price includes the car, plus your rideshare insurance, and best of all, unlimited miles. Now, when you compare this program to Lyft's program, the cost for the car is less and the bonuses are more. The program is available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the FAIR website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out, download the FAIR app, get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right? All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey everybody, it is Jay, and today's episode, we are going to go over some news stories. I got to say, listeners, it's been a frustrating day. I don't know how many of you have Macs out there and how many of you upgraded to Catalina, the supposedly really great new operating system. I did. And it's been a bit of a nightmare. So basically, there are a lot of apps out there that run on what's called 32-bit technology. And when you go to Catalina, it only works with 64-bit. So, for example, I had uh, Microsoft Word, which I use all the time. Uh, It was uh, from 2011. Came on the computer. Doesn't work. So I had to go and buy a a subscription for Microsoft to have Word and Excel and PowerPoint, all really important things. Photoshop is another one. Photoshop stopped working. So I'm now paying for Photoshop as well. I use that to, you know, make images for, for articles and for videos. All right. So I'm like, okay, then uh, to edit videos, I use an, uh, something called Final Cut Pro. Does not work. That costs three hundred dollars. Well, I'm not spending three hundred dollars when I can use iMovie, which is virtually the same. So now I'm using iMovie. So I had to download that. Then I've got a program called Audacity, which is normally what I record um, these on mic episodes on. I just plug in a microphone to my computer. <laughs> fire up Audacity, <clears throat> hit the record button, and start talking. Audacity does not record with Catalina. So now I've got to wait for a new Audacity version to come out where they've got that handled. can't really complain much because Audacity is free, and I could download something like um, GarageBand, and that would work fine. So what I'm doing now is I pulled out my trusty H4N Pro, and I mic'd up. I got my little lavalier mic on. And we're doing it that way. So, a lot of things, a lot of things happening this morning. But I am going to record this, and I am going to ship it today. And by the time you'll you'll be hearing this, which will be uh, on Monday, it should should all just sound great. All right, I pulled out seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven articles. We're going to go over them 
bullet points and I think you'll find these interesting because they all pertain to being a rideshare driver. All right, number one, Uber lays off another 350 across Eats, Uber Eats, self-driving, great, and uh, other departments. So this is Tech Crunch. It's got a little picture of Dara K in front of a group of people. And, uh, you know, it, uh, they're, they're cutting more people. They're trimming their fat. So if that makes you feel any better that some people at Uber lost their jobs, <laughs> there you go. Um, and uh, be, here, here's, what, uh, here's what he said in his email. Team Uber, as you know, over the past few months, our leaders have looked carefully at their teams to ensure our organizations are structured for success for the next few years. This has resulted in difficult but necessary changes to ensure we have the right people in the right roles in the right locations and that we're always holding ourselves accountable to top performance. Today is the last wave of a process we began months ago with our marketing team, uh, blah, blah, blah. Days like today are tough for all of us, okay? We have proven ourselves to be not only one of the most ambitious and innovative companies in the world, but also one of the most resilient We've always pushed through tough times and come out on the other side better and stronger company. That will continue to be true tomorrow and every day after. As always, we'll be at the all hands tomorrow and we'll dedicate most of the time to answer your questions. Add yours to the Salido here. Eyes forward, back to building. Dara. All right, so he's putting a happy face on it. You know, I guess if you're reading that and you didn't get laid off, you're feeling pretty good. You know, you still got your job. But uh, that's the, that's that's where we're at. These are these are businesses that are now public, and they need to uh, trim the fat, and they got to somehow become profitable. That's why they keep jerking us around with uh, all these games that are you know ultimately paying us less. Okay, story number two: letter to the editor, Los Angeles Times. Letter to the editor: Uber and Lyft make. LAX, the Los Angeles airport, a nightmare. Move them off site, but not taxis. All right, so if you don't know, in LAX, they moved uh, Uber and Lyft, similar to what they did in San Francisco. You can't pick people up at the curb anymore. Uh, there's a, a, a parking area that takes up to 25 minutes to walk to, depending on what terminal you're at. And uh, here's the, here's, it's a short uh, letter to the editor. There's one very important difference between rideshare and taxi picks up, pickups at LAX, both of which will soon be moved to a parking lot east of Terminal 1. So they're not only moving Uber and Lyft to, the, to this big parking lot, but taxis as well. Taxis do not make curbside pickups the way private vehicles and rideshare services do. Rather, cab drivers need to wait at stands located at various points on the arrivals level. We who prefer cabs and are accustomed to walking safely to the taxi stands are being thrown in with those who think rideshare is the greatest contribution to humankind since the invention of sliced bread. Well, LAX is now making toast of us. Nobody asked Uber and Lyft to come in and clog the airport roadways. Um, so this is a very unhappy uh, user of LAX because now rather than going to get into his taxi cabs where he's been accustomed to, because of Uber and Lyft and all of the increased uh, congestion, they're just moving all of it off-site. So I can understand this guy's frustration. It's the same thing they did here in uh, San Francisco, which was terrible. I, why didn't they just leave it the way it was? It made it easier for passengers. They could get rides faster, and it certainly was better for the drivers. But uh, I'm just a driver. Okay, number three. Uber, this is from Business Insider. Uber and Lyft are refusing to appear at a congressional hearing angering lawmakers, all right? So Uber and Lyft were asked to appear in front of our government and they just did not show up. Um, Uber and Lyft have declined to appear at a hearing on Wednesday on ride hailing industry issues. The chairman of the US House of Representatives panel said, urging them to reconsider. This is unacceptable, Representative Peter DeFazio told the company's chief executives in letters dated Monday, right? Uh, so, uh, DeFazio said the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee held numerous conversations with the company's staff over the last few weeks and strongly urged the companies to take part in the hearing. 
Instead, Uber CEO Dara Kay and Lyft CEO Logan Green suggested that the committee invite third-party industry associ associates, associations to generally talk about technology innovation in transportation. Lyft did not immediately provide a comment, and Uber spokeswoman confirmed receipt of the letter but did not com comment further. You know, so it's just like they're just sticking their fingers up at the government. Uh, they just, they, they really seem to feel they are above the law. I think we're going to see in California that they are not going to respect AB5. We already have pretty good hints about that, um, saying that uh, drivers are not part of their business structure. Utter BS. But <clears throat> so that keeps you up to date there on a little bit of the, that. Now, this is kind of interesting. <clears throat> this is from uh, Deadline, uh, which I guess is an online magazine about the, uh, in, the uh, entertainment industry. Super pumped, the battle for Uber. For Uber. So that's the name of uh, something that's coming. Super pumped, the battle for Uber. Uber. Why can't I say that? Super pumped, the battle for Uber, the limited series adaptation from Billions Duo in works at Showtime. So Showtime is going to be doing a limited series called Super Pumped, the battle for Uber. And the guys who are put together Billions, which is a fantastic show, are going to be doing it. So this should be really good, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they portray Travis Kalanick. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. Um, doesn't really say when exactly we can expect this to happen, but uh, it's in the works. So that's something to look forward to. Super pumped. The battle for Uber. All right. Next one is, uh, I can't even believe this was a news story. I mean, in Business Insider, if I knew you could write an article as simple as this and have it published inside of Business Insider, I would have. Here, here's <laughs> all it is. It, the, the title of the is, I'm a driver for Uber and Lyft. Here's exactly how much I made in one week on the job. And then there's a picture of a guy in front of his Prius in shorts and a flip-flop, just some, you know, 30-something guy with, a, with glasses and a little beard. And... Uh, I don't know how many rides he's done. But basically, he just kept track of how much he made. And it doesn't really indicate where he was driving. So that, of course, makes a big frickin' difference, right? Um, but if we just scroll down to the bottom, because we want to find out, you know, it's more of a diary, really, more of a diary. Um, I put, let's see, here it is. Um, in total, I drove 11 trips on Uber and 16 trips on Lyft for a total of 27 trips. I worked 14 hours in total. So this is not even. This is like a part. This is like a day, right, for a full-time driver. I made $152 on Uber and $104 on Lyft for a total of $257 in gross, um, which gave me an average of $18.72 per hour before expenses. See, and then people read this and they think, okay, so that's what drivers make. And you just can't put, you, you can't, I mean, depends where you're driving. I'm driving in Sacramento and I'm averaging about $22 an hour. This weekend I'll go to San Francisco and I'll drive for three solid days and I'll make $30 an hour, right? Work 30 hours and come back with $900. It all depends where you're working. Uh, the rates are different. The demand is different. And then how much experience does this guy have to maximize, you know, his per hour? Um, he goes on to say, I put 291 miles on his Prius. It's about six gallons of gas. So that's another $13. He says he could have worked. So 14 flexible hours is not a lot of work. And 257 in gross pay is a fair amount of extra money for simply driving around, listening to music, and making jokes and conversation with mostly nice strangers I'll never uh, see again. It's easy and sometimes fun. Okay, <clears throat> so so it's kind of a fluff piece, I would say, um, because it's very vague. I mean, it, we know how much he made per hour. We don't know where he made it, how much experience he has, and so what. Okay, next one. These two have to do with San Francisco. San Francisco votes to ban cars from Market Street. So I am all for this. I do not. Market Street is a main street that goes through San Francisco. And it's where a lot of tourists walk up and down. There's some nice shops on it. Some parts of, of it are a little sketchy, uh, especially at night. Um, 
So I'm all for this. This is great. San Francisco votes to ban cars from Market Street. So this would uh, keep cars off, and they make a point of saying that Uber and Lyft ride-hailing cars would also be verboten. He's not allowed, but would be allowed to drop passengers off at cross streets. The current plan includes the addition of over 40 new white passenger loading zones and more than 200 yellow commercial loading zones on side streets near market. Um, so this would allow people to walk, to ride bikes, uh, to generally feel safer on Market Street. And as long as we can drive across it every once in a while so that we don't have to you know, go, all, go along the length of it to get across it, I, I like it. I, I think it would be great to have a big walking street in San Francisco. Uh, similar to the way Copenhagen has this massive, beautiful, long walking street. You just feel safe. You walk on the street. You don't have to worry about cars. Uh, but, of course, they'll still have trolley cars and probably buses going up and down Market Street. So it won't be a pure walking street, but people will feel safer because there won't be quite as much traffic. Okay, this last story was in the San Francisco Chronicle. It came out end of last uh, month. I've actually written an article about this, and I'm going to make a video about this. And uh, the, the title of the article is, He Drives 60 Hours a Week for Uber, He's Still Homeless. He drives 60 hours a week for Uber, He's Still Homeless. So I, I looked at this, and I thought, oh, San Francisco Chronicle. This couldn't, could not be somebody who's driving in San Francisco. But in fact, it is. Um, so there's a, a picture of the guy. They named the guy. I'm not going to uh, show that information here because I just uh, don't understand um, how somebody who drives full-time in San Francisco cannot afford to pay rent. It just does not make any sense to me. So I went through and I looked at you know some of the specifics, and he, he says flat out he makes $20 an hour gross. And I'm like, well, something's wrong there. Anyone who's driving full-time in San Francisco who's only making $20 an hour gross is just, not, is just not working smart. I mean, like I just said, I can make over $22 an hour driving in Sacramento where the demand is way less and the, and, and, and the rates are way less. Um, San Francisco, that's one of the best markets in the, in the country to drive in. And even the guy I trained, Jeremy, who was just starting out, was making an easy $25 uh, an hour. So, uh, so right, right there, this qualifies this whole thing because there's a big difference between 25 and 20. That's a substantial difference. I mean, the difference between 20 and 25 times 60 hours, that's enough to pay to, to, to have a place to, to, to sleep at night, you know, a place to live. And it's kind of like... There are a lot of these stories about you know people sleeping in their cars, and I get it um, for people that are say coming from Fresno, or or, or Bakersfield or L.A. They want to come for the weekend, and uh, you know they're going to come in on Friday. They're going to work all day Friday. They're just going to sleep in their car, drive all day Saturday, sleep in their car, work some on Sunday, and then go home. So what are they saving? They're saving about you know 100 to 150 dollars instead of getting a, let's say, an Airbnb, you know, to, to, to sleep at night. And they want to do that as a choice because they're going to save some money. Great. But it's not because they have to, right? If you're going to work three hard, hard days in San Francisco, you're going to make anywhere from $700 to $1,000. You've got some money there to, to, to spend uh, to, to, sleep, to sleep at night. But somebody who's, who works full-time in San Francisco... Uh, and, and admits to working 60 hours, um, you, this guy's just not doing it right. There's just no way you can only you'd have to you'd have to work really hard to only make $20 an hour uh, driving in San Francisco. So in the article I wrote, I made some suggestions about some mistakes, common mistakes new drivers make, um, which uh, you know you can correct to improve your per hour earnings, like driving on the weekends more than during the week, making sure you're driving during morning rush hour and afternoon rush hour, you know, getting those long trips uh, when the traffic is light, using your destination filters to maximize your long, your long trips, you know, when to take breaks, what parts of the city to, to drive in in the morning and what parts of, to, to drive in in the afternoon, when to cancel on rides, 
you know. But if this guy's a full-time driver, they, these are things you got to you got to pick up um, because if it makes the difference between you sleeping in your car or sleeping in a in a, in a you know an apartment, um, I would be highly highly motivated because I think when you sleep uh, you know in a in a in a bed rather than in your car, you're getting a better night's sleep, you're getting more rest, you're going to think clearer, and you're going to make more money. You're going to get more tips. You know, so it's kind of like a it's like a vicious cycle this uh, driver seems to be in that he needs to get himself out of. And once he gets himself out of it, then, then, the, then the cycle goes the other way and things get better much quicker. Uh, when you're getting a good night's sleep, you got your own place, you feel good about you know, having your own place rather than saying to the world, I'm sleeping in my car. So I don't know if he's really sleeping in his car still, if he really was, if this is just for the story. But this this is definitely goes with the, the the narrative that you know drivers have it really really hard. The drivers are sleeping in their car, and I think that's overplayed. I think that's a narrative um, that the media seems to like, and um, it's just not the case. At least in San Francisco, because the rates are high and the demand is there. Right? I'm going to go this weekend and drive there, and I guarantee you, I'm going to come back with $900 after three days in San Francisco. I'm going to spend 100 of it uh, on a on a Airbnb, and I'll gross, you know, I'll net after everything, you know, $750 after paying for gas and paying for a place to sleep. So um, the idea that you can only make $20 an hour just I don't buy it. I don't buy it. There you go. All right. If you got anything you want to contribute to this. Uh, diatribe on uh, different Lyft and Uber rideshare articles that I found in the media. Go to Rideshare Dojo. You can leave a comment. And uh, next week, I've got a really cool uh, interview uh, coming up. And um, thanks for listening. As always, uh, drive safe out there. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe and then every day you're just going to it's going to automatically load up and you're going to get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I'm really enjoying doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there. <laughs>